It's the Daily Dog. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Daily Dog. Thanks for hanging out with me today. On today's episode, friends, is one of the more important songs of the 20th century. It's not one of the biggest hits. It's not one that everybody, I think, initially can, can go, yeah, I know that one and hum along to it. But uh, important, it remains. And I am talking about Billie Holiday and her recording of Strange Fruit. So thanks for hanging out with me today, friends. This is part of our continuing celebration of Black History Month. And sometimes that's a lot of fun, and it's it's got a lot of great uh, moving and grooving music, but sometimes we're dealing with some real societal ills. And uh, the, uh, the subject matter is on racism and lynching of black people. So I just bring that up for y'all if that is a topic that is very difficult for you to, uh, to process in real time. So uh, the story goes like this, uh, y'all. In 1937, a guy named Abel Mirapol uh, wrote and published a poem that uh, was published under uh, the name Bitter Fruit. Uh, and he published that in a teacher's union publication in New York City. Abel had Russian and Jewish ancestry, and he lived in the Bronx. And he was inspired to write this poem uh, under his pseudonym Lewis Allen. Uh, by a 1930 photograph that depicted the lynching of two black men in Indiana. And so he adapted uh, this poem and set it to music. And the song became uh, started to become well known uh, throughout the New York area due to some social performances by uh, Abel and his wife, uh, as well as a performance at Madison Square Garden as part of a protest gathering. And uh, the, the ominous lyric uh, portrays black victims uh, as fruits that hang from a tree uh, before they rot and decompose. And that draws a stark comparison to the lynching and disposal of of these victims, right? So uh, fast forward a couple years. Uh, in 1939, Billie Holiday had been introduced to the song, and uh, she began uh, began uh, to uh, sing it in, in her live performances, even though she was uh, fearful of, uh, of backlash, of retaliation from it. Um, and she wasn't the only one. Her recording label, Columbia, also... Uh, feared retaliation, and they refused to work with Billy to record and release the song. So Billy ended up receiving a release from uh, Columbia uh, for this single song, for her to go record it with a different recording label, and that she did. She recorded it on April 20th of 1939 on the Commodore label. And this is an interesting sidebar, y'all. The Commodore label was run by a guy named Milt Gabler, and Milt is Billy Crystal's uncle. Uh, if you have access to, to uh, HBO, Billy tells a great story about his uncle Milt and Billy and the recording of this song uh, during his one-man show uh, that is called 700 Sundays. And uh, it's it's a wonderful <laughs> uh, one-man show from Billy, but it's, it's great to see how even he's connected. Uh, through this, uh, as a young person, he he knew Billie Holiday, right? So um, the the musicians on this recording are all members of the Cafe Society band, and uh, they were the house band at Cafe Society in the Village, in the West Village in New York, and that uh, um, that cafe was the uh, the first racially integrated nightclub in in New York. And so uh, Billy would go on to record the song again in 1944, but it's that original 1939 recording that has over the years gone on to earn this really historic status. It's kind of the start of the civil rights era and it is seen historically as a true protest song, one of the first to hit mainstream uh, society. And it has gone on to be included in the National Recording Registry in the Library of Congress. And dozens of musicians over the years have, have covered the song and paid tribute to Billy 
in the process. So uh, let's listen. Friends, this is the original 1939 recording. I believe it's the oldest recording that I have included on the channel thus far. And uh, I am eager to be uh, reconnected with this uh, very important uh, historic song. So here's Strange Fruit from Billie Holiday. Off we go. <laughs> key too. B flat minor. I read that uh, Sonny White, who was the pianist, improvised this extended intro to make the song a bit longer on the recording. just verses in this. it it's just it's just three short verses there is no chorus I'm, I'm i i have the lyrics in front of me and the poem is laid out in um an a a b b uh format uh the it's four uh line stanzas and the first two lines uh rhyme and then the, the last two lines of each stanza rhyme and um It's it's sad that a song like this needs to exist, but I'm sure um, thankful that it does. Uh, it, it speaks to uh, man's inhumanity to man, right? And and it draws a line, and it's just documenting really what's going on and bringing that to the forefront instead of hiding behind it and worrying about what some people might think if it's recorded, uh, you know, uh, that takes a, an immense amount of courage and it can also do a number on your head too. And, and sadly, I think, um, it, this plagued Billy or was part of what plagued her for the rest of her life. She was just 24 years old. Uh, when you hear her on this recording, 
Um, sadly, she would die just 20 years later at the age of 44. She gained respect from her peers uh, in the years leading up to this by working with some of the best of the day, including uh, Duke Ellington and Count Basie and Artie Shaw. But it was her performance uh, performances at the Cafe Society and this recording of Strange Fruit that really catapulted her popularity as uh, as a singer. Um, like I said, sadly, with her success came some personal demons. She began to use hard drugs and she drank heavily. And this affected not only her voice, but her body. And by 1959, she had contracted uh, cirrhosis of the liver as well as uh, as heart disease, and and she died in, in 1959. And uh, as as I read in, uh, she was quite poor even as as she died. And it's just a sad story uh, of of the the end of her life. But uh, in the intervening years, she has received several posthumous awards, including being inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame, as well as the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, and uh, she's garnered many Grammy nominations. There's been films made about her life, books written about her. She um, maintains a, uh, an important um, role in American popular music, especially jazz, and as an African-American artist. And so today, uh, it is my privilege to uh, to include this very very important song, y'all, um, for uh, for our audience. It was um, important for me to come back and re remember uh, the circumstances around the recording and and read up on some about Billy and her life, and uh, and just be reminded of the timing of this and just how, um, I keep coming back to it, important it is. And so because of its importance, I just could not leave it out uh, here during the month of February, Black History Month, as we are going through some of the, uh, the most important and best uh, examples of music performed uh, and offered by, by black musicians. So Strange Fruit, recorded by Billie Holiday, y'all. Uh, it's not an easy subject matter, but boy, we uh, will do well to uh, to remember uh, why it exists and what it's talking about, and and to to really kind of recommit to um, not letting stuff like this ever happen again, you know. And um, that is my hope that um, a lot of this is history and not going to repeat itself that we hope right so thanks for being with me today this was a tough one but like i said really important for us to get to and i am happy that you have been here to listen with uh, to me with a uh, strange fruit from billy holiday thanks y'all for uh, for being with me and we will see you next time on another edition of the daily doug